Hello everyone, welcome back to Howard Bright Row Studios Off The Mag. Got some new things coming because we're getting the channel up and running again. Just wanted to remind you that this is an unsponsored channel, so please click the subscribe button and click the likes so that we can keep this going. Had the great pleasure of interviewing a photographer named Karen Riley. Karen spends his time between Trinidad and Tobago and, the, and Europe. He's got a great sense for the art, He's got a great sense for what's going on, what's coming next. Let's jump right in. Kevin Riley, welcome to Howard Bright Rose Studio off the mag. Really glad to have you. It's taken a, t a little bit for me to get you on. You know, I know that, uh, you know, you kept telling me you weren't ready. You weren't ready. You weren't ready. I'm glad you're ready. Um, and, you know, like I said before, I really look forward to talking to you. I know you spend um, about 50% of your time in Europe and 50% of your time in Trinidad and on the islands. And I'm looking, for, you know, so you have a totally different perspective than I do of what the state of the art is and where things are going. And I'd love that to like weave into our discussion. Um, let's jump right in and I'm going to share my screen. There we are. So um, as you could see, I, I, I chose this one of the this black and white because i think it's extremely moving um you know and i'd like to be like why is the guy flying in the air you know what are they doing you know what's <laughs> you know because because to me it's kind of joyous but it might have a totally different meaning yeah it's it's you know this photo i took this photo when i first came made the move to the Caribbean because I grew up in Washington, DC, um, Bethesda, Maryland. And when I first came on the island, um, well, first of all, when I graduated from what, you know, you have all your photographer friends in the US and everybody is trying to push themselves to find an avenue where they could be unique or different from the other person. You know I mean? Whether it's portraiture or whether it's taking pictures. I had a friend, he was taking pictures of trash cans, like the rust on trash cans. And everybody was finding an avenue. And some people were going to India, some people were going to Bali. Um, to be honest with you, I what I didn't felt such so brave to do something so drastic, but I wanted to have do something different. And my aunt one day she said to me, um, why don't you come to Trinidad and help me with my um political campaign? Because at the time I did a lot of um, being part of the DC area, I work with Congress or so photograph, you know, different stuff, um, political. So should I come help me with my campaign in Trinidad? And I was like, huh? And after thinking about it, I decided I felt safer, <laughs> you know, not going into the unknown because I had family there and I grew up there as a little child. So I, I have a vague remember memory of what's it like there. So I was like, let me give it a chance. So this was the first photo I took upon arriving and trying to find myself and settle down on the island and it's a different weather climate it's a different attitude uh fashion style everything was different and this picture i went to the beach for the first time and <clears throat> it was a place called map creek i'll be quick it used to be an old u.s base uh, where the u.s used to house their submarine fleet and the structure is from world war ii around that time and what we call U-boat, U-boats. And the structure is no longer really quite there. So the old submarine base is in the water, out of the water, going onto land. And I remember seeing these guys just jumping off the platform. And it took me a while to get to the platform. And I was like, where the guy is sitting, I was sitting right there, enjoying the view. And at some point I felt, I felt, I didn't know these people and I had a, back then, uh, I forgot the camera, but it was an expensive camera. And I, after a while I realized I'm kind of exposed. I don't know these people. I don't know if they could take my camera. I don't know, you know, and I was like, let me back out a bit. And I remember leaving and going back to the beach and I, I looked back. So you were back, so you were at the beach, right? And, you know, I, and here, I'm going to tell you right now, I've been in some pretty, you know, as a traveler that I've been, you know, since I was a kid, I, um, I used to go up and back to Mexico. Right. And believe me, I've been in some pretty interesting places that, uh, I probably shouldn't have been with an expensive piece of equipment. So yeah. know the feeling well, <laughs> you know? 
Um, yeah, because you, you never know. You don't you don't know how the locals will take to you taking out a big expensive camera, and it's not like a point and shoot. It's, I have right. the huge lens. I'm carrying a, a seventy to two hundred on my on my waist, and you just don't know how they're gonna react. But they were having fun. Everything was going cool until they realized, wait a minute. And I, I guess people always say to you, are you going to sell my picture and make money off of it? And I'm like, uh, no, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> no, but, um, but upon leaving the beach, I looked back and I, I was just, I, you know, it, I fi finally realized where I was. Because I, I don't think I had settled down, that, settled that I'm in the Caribbean now. And right. to me, that was the moment where I felt I'm in the Caribbean. I'm not no longer in Washington, D.C. And I took this picture, and yeah, and that was it. And you know, you know, this is one of my favorite pictures. And the only thing I feel bad about is because I don't think they knew that I took this picture of them. Like I can't, I can't go back and say, "Hey, look, look what I took of you. Look how cool it looks." Right. And that's the only thing sad thing about this photo. And I, and nobody never approached me. I'm more popular now on the island. I'm always hoping that somebody will say, hey, I remember you. You took that picture of me jumping. I wish that could happen. I will just hug the guy and say thank you. You know what I mean? This is not here. <laughs> yeah. No, because it's, it's really – it's a cool photo. That's why I put it first. So let's yeah, – It, move it also won an award for um, BP competition. Cool. Photo competition. Yeah. Cool. So I, I know you have a – you know, like – you and our um you know our friend don the and my, myself you know we've been i've been shooting uh people since the beginning of time um you know and uh so let's talk about this one because i like it I, the thing i like about the and i've been noticing about your work because you you're a very big poster um so i get to look at a, a lot of it is the folks who you shoot and the even if that you know they're very very relatable you know what I mean? And, um, and, and I like that. I like that you, you try to get a little bit deeper than just the surface. Uh, this photo, this photo was actually taken for a magazine called Scorch magazine, which is one of the pretty popular, uh, fashion magazine here in the Caribbean. Um, you know, the funny thing, this, this photo was by accident because we were doing is at a yoga studio and this, this girl wasn't picked because she was a model. She was actually, we picked people who are doing extraordinary things. And she was actually a race car driver, a rally driver, if I, if I remember. And that, that alone, I was like, wow, okay. Uh, so when she agreed to do the photo shoot, I was really happy and, you know, and she's fit. And I remember her getting ready and I have the set all set up. And I looked back and I saw this photo of her saying, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm, I'm coming. And I just took it. and. This actually, if I think it became the cover. Cool. No, it's nice. See, that hap it's always, you know, <laughs> that always happens. You know, you you do, you you shoot a, a when back in the day, in the film days, right? You shoot a thousand rolls of film and then all of a sudden you, that exactly happens, you know? You know, all of a sudden you get like two frames that you're just hoping that are on there, you know? That's the, and the same thing now with, um with digital is that, you know, it's, even though it's a little bit more immediate, you know, you you'll do a thousand captures and then all of a sudden something magical will happen. And then, you know, then you're quickly reviewing, you know, you're, you're, you're looking at the back of the camera to make sure you got it. You know, you know, seeing this photo now makes me want to find out what she's up to. Is she married now? Does she have kids? Like what's going on? You know? No, because it's, it's really beautiful. I, I love the, you know, I just like the, like I said, is, you know, as I feel like the, you know, you're having a conversation with her. Now this, this I I love I love <laughs> photos like this. I'm I love like urban, you know, all of the decay and all of the, you know, and the textures. And then you have like this beautiful young woman, you know, with all that smooth skin, all against all of that, you know. It, it where did you what what gave you the the uh, you know uh, what gave you this. <laughs> That it was fashion week in Trinidad, the first fashion week ever. And I guess it was more representing the Caribbean. So designers came from all different parts of the Caribbean. And Dawn Thompson was like, let's go shoot. I want you to shoot something for me. There was a, a magazine I was visiting. I forgot the name of it. And we we're like, what are we going to shoot? And he said, let's go to the local market. And I'm like, I'm not going there. Are you crazy? 
He's like, no, no, no. I'm, he's like, we're gonna go. And we went there. And I remember setting up this photo because we were shooting off the wall. And like you said, the pattern, the decay and all that stuff was really cool. And these kids just showed up next to me. And they were like, they were in total awe. They have never seen a tall, long, beautiful woman like this before. And I was like, can I borrow it? Can she ride your bike? And they were like, yeah. So they gave her the bike. And as they were standing right next to me, watching her pose, I took four steps back. And again, they had no idea I took this picture. That was it. Yeah, no, that's like I said, right? Those are the those are the things that we that that if you you know the the cool thing about what we do is um and, you know and what I've been doing is sometimes it's just that right. It's like yeah. look at this, and then all of a sudden it's like all right, let me creep backwards, and you know all of a sudden it turns into like into a movie scene. It's really cool. I love it. This was this was ten years ago, I believe, or yeah. maybe twelve years ago, I think. And I like to hope that one of them decided, you know what, I could be a photographer too. Yeah, no, <laughs> I, I, believe me, I. I you you've 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 been to you've been to the my photo school i hope that every day of the week you know yeah. it's uh you know i it it's the to me it's the it's a really great art form um it's very difficult as you know uh you know that there's a lot riding on it and it's so funny uh don and i had a conversation i i talked to him uh you know a couple of weeks ago and he said to me you know the way he is, Howard Mann. Do you realize how many productions you've probably been on in your life? Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I was like, I have no idea. He goes, I figure you've been on ten thousand productions. You know, and I, I, it, it's just luck, right? It's luck. It's being in love with it, and you know, and being able to like work with guys like Don and guys, you know, out, you know, the, the thousands of people that I've worked with and then get to meet folks like you. And it, it really, it really, it really has made it worth it. So what, uh, aside from that being a really nice looking guitar, what are we doing here? So, um, this photo, um, was in Tobago, the Island of Tobago. And, um, this is one of my recent ones. And, the guy is, I've been a fan of his music and of his acting um, for a while, seeing him on, you know, on Facebook and stuff like that. And we, we, we know each other by crossing each other's path, but we never had an opportunity where I could photograph him. Like, you know, you have that person you always want to photograph. Yes. He's been like on my top three list for, for years. And now he got, he's, uh, his girlfriend, I believe they're married. He's married, girlfriend married, whatever, I'm not sure. And she asked me to take some photos of her. And I was hoping that she she would say that he would be there also. And guess what? He came. There you and go. I spend the evening with them at the beach. We you know we had we 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 ate at the beach like a little picnic. We take some photos, and I remember seeing him sit there, you know, waiting while I was photographing her. And I asked her to join him. And you know, it's funny how pictures show emotional. They have the strong bond with each other. And I felt good about it. And I was like, can I photograph it to you just sitting there? And that was it. Yeah, it's a beautiful photograph. I love it. You know, I mean, that's a, it, like I said, that's the stuff that, you know, that, that I love about like still photography, right? Because once like you feel a whole story here, you know, without even knowing the story. And, and that's what makes it, that's what makes it wonderful. You know, in fact, yeah, that's love. That's love right there, man. Yeah, no, very definitely. <laughs> and, um. Oh, wow. This is powerful, man. Wow. I remember this one. Um, so my, um, she's a fitness trainer. And she was like, Kieran, um, have you ever done fitness photography before? And I really hadn't done it before. I haven't had photo. And, you know, I wanted, because I was all fashion orientated back then, I wanted it to be a little bit fashion oriented but a little bit real you know and remember we went to an old skateboarder skateboard skaters factory kind of thing where they skateboard and i was like it was just a beautiful um setting and you know you, you know sometimes you do these photography shoots by yourself you know there's no assistance there's nobody holding the light there's nobody in case the light falls over and the wind's blowing and you're trying to move this and I remember being frustrated with the surrounding. You know, something you, you find a beautiful place, it's amazing. 
but you just can't get the lighting and everything correct. And I remember just turning the lights off and putting her to sit right there with the light, strong light coming from the back. And I loved how I liked how it hugged her face, hugged the head. And I was, you know what? This is it. Yeah, no, and it's got the right amount, the front. I mean, it's really the the balance is really beautiful, you know. Because a lot of times when people shoot photographs like this where the background is high key, you can't see the subject. And here, you know, it's definitely all about her. You know, I love that. That's the real. trick of this photo too was getting her head, because even though I knew it's gonna be very bright outside, it was very bright, I needed to separate her head. So you, to force you to focus on her head. And I remember going up and down and I got it right there with enough light in the background there. So you could still see her body, but her head was like, you could see she's beautiful and she's an amazing person and she's sweating, you know? Right. No, it looks awesome. Thank Thanks you. Thanks a lot. No, that's really cool. You know? Oh, and yeah. <laughs> you know, Howard, sometimes these shoots are not planned at all, you know? They're no, not planned. <laughs> this was not planned. This is me hanging out at the beach and meeting this, this, this friend of a friend. And, you know, a lot of time at the beach, my camera is in my backpack. And, you know, people, you know, they talk to me, Hey, what do you do? I'm a photographer. I do fashion photography. And I remember seeing this woman and she's like, she made a joke and she said, I bet I could be a, a photograph like your models. And I was like, yes, you can. And, you know, I actually sat right there at the edge of the beach. It was rough. And this was it. It yeah. took me 10 minutes to set up and that was it. Like I, I said, alone. Yeah, like I said, it's the, you know, it's those it's those it's those situations, you know, you um you actually made a commentary on one of my photos that, you know, you make the ordinary seem inordinary, right? Yeah, you do. <laughs> you know, and the the fact is is that that's a that's uh, that's from thousands and thousands and thousands of reps you know what i mean the it's the repetition of being able to understand what you're looking at and you know looking at things a little bit differently and it's really um th thank you that was a wonderful uh compliment i really that's why i remember it um but it's the that's the thing right like it's if this wasn't in you it wouldn't look you know, it, it certainly wouldn't look as nice, right? Because you had to coach her into this, you know, that you also needed to have like all that technique to get the sun, get the, the splash, all of that stuff. So no, I, I, I appreciate that, you know, um, part of the, the part of my travel through like photography and all of this, aside from the fact that I like both the technique and I like the action, the obvious art form of it is being able to do stuff like this, right? That's yeah. if you didn't have the practice, these things like this that that are impromptu don't look as beautiful. They just don't, you know what I mean? It's just, I think that the, if you weren't, um, as you know, have it, you know, if you weren't in it all the time, it just it, it just doesn't happen like this. Yeah, I always tell young photographers, I was like, the reason why you, if you find you're struggling, your picture's not looking good, is because you're not shooting enough. Right. You can't just shoot once a week or or once a month. You got to be shooting. Yeah, whether you're getting paid or not, you got to be shooting. And if you're not, and if you're not shooting, you're thinking about shooting. Yeah, you know? yeah. I dream yeah. photography when I go to sleep. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to move on to the next one, but we, I, I want to take, I want to continue with that on that vein. It's not just, it's, it's in your head, right. All the time. Right. I'm looking at, I'm looking at movement. I'm looking at uh, perspective. I'm looking at color, right. You know, I have a tendency to think in black and white and how am I going to fill in? Because that's the, the, why that's how I'm able to do it a little bit is that I've learned how to think in black and white and leave the colors like, uh, like, secondary so that I, when i'm composing i'm composing the dark and the light first you know and then yeah. i'm like oh well it's you know this is going to be a cool color you know it's, and then i move it then i move into that and it's um you know so i i i i fully i i i get that and the that that's the way you know and it's what you need to it it's very funny um you can 
I love working with younger photographers for two reasons. A, because they truly are like, if they're in it, they want to learn and they want to learn yeah. a lot. Right. And they're always asking questions. And then the other thing is, is that I learned from all of that. You know, um, it, it's the oblique questions, like the group, the photo group that you and I belong to. Sometimes somebody asks a question and I have to be, and I'm like, I got to think about that before I'm ready to answer it, you know, because it, I don't want, A, I don't want it to be BS and B, right. I want it, if I'm going to help, I want to be able to help, you know? Yeah, true. Yeah. You know, and the, and like me and my dynamic range and pushing the camera to the limit and stuff like that. Yeah, I do that. I do that. You know, it, it's it's very funny. Um, one of my somebody else asked me, like, Howard, how do you do that? Like, ac you know, accurately all the time. I'm going to say something very simple. I read the directions for the camera. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and I set it up. I, I sat there and like, you know, with those stupid, you know, Nikon, because I'm a Nikon guy, like Nikon's menus are not easy, right? So you got to go deep into the menus and it's one menu to another menu and to another menu. And then, then you got to shoot a couple of frames and then, yeah, it didn't hold and you got to go back. And it's, you know, it's that kind of, that's how I do it. You know, it's very funny. My wife is uh, like, you know, when we go out and she's with me and, uh, and I got the camera, she's like, give me the camera. She's like, what do I have? <laughs> Yeah. You, know, you put your eye behind the camera and push the button. She's like, I don't have to touch it. I don't, you don't have to touch anything because I've already set it up, you know, so that, so that when we do walk into a situation, it's, it's already ready to go. And if I have to make them in, you know, and I do, I would say that I do other than laying a little sharpening on there and I don't use a heavy sharpening table. I do nothing. Right. I don't edit at all i crop maybe a little bit but i like that right if my head you know that if it, it, it when my eye is behind the viewfinder that's you know that's where i'm i'm shooting all the entire plane i'm not looking to to like chop out a, a piece you know yeah so this is intense um i like the you know the her little tattoo is very interesting Right. So what, where, you know, well, this one was done in Poland. So I, I, like I said, I go back and forth between Poland and the Caribbean. Right. And we were, we were doing a shoot. I can't remember what it's for, but I remember being in the studio and this was a off the, off the, you know, why are you shooting something commercial, something else you see for yourself mm -hmm. and in conversation with her. She was get she was getting married and she was just so excited about the whole thing of getting married. And I remember seeing, noticing the tattoo. I love him. And I was like, hey, this is for you. And uh, I remember just taking this picture. And I was like, just put your hands up like this. Just look yeah. into the camera. And this will always remind him that you love him. Yeah, no, that's really that's really beautiful. I mean, it, yeah. it, this was a couple of years ago. They're still married. They got two kids. <laughs> there you go. Right. So she must really love him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be married. I'm going to be married for 30 years to this year. 30 years. 30 years. I haven't, I don't know, man. I don't think I'll make it. I haven't been married yet. <laughs> yeah, well, I bet, you know, it's, it, it's I'm very lucky. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very lucky that she's able to put up with my, you know, the craziness <laughs> of my life. So is this, is this France? This is Amsterdam. Amsterdam. But the thing of the locks on the bridges, it's, I think it's something taken from France where they put locks on the bridges and you kiss. Right. Um, it's a big thing in Amsterdam also. Uh, they put all these locks on a, and then you, um, but anyway, this was a couple from South Korea and they contacted me and said, Hey, we love your pictures. We're coming to um, Amsterdam. Um, we see you do fashion and lifestyle stuff. Would you take pictures of us? <laughs> I was like, sure. Why not? And um, yeah, this was this, this, you know, oh, you know, cool. after walking around and you setting up shots and on the canals and stuff like that. Again, a lot of times when I'm shooting, I like to step back. So I was, I remember like that, that's a good technique I use a lot. So I step back on, on the other side and I just let the traffic just keep going by, and that was it. No, oh, it's I awesome. Mean, I I, I love it. I love the yeah. I like oh, the sorry. guy. You know, I mean, he's oblivious. The bicyclist or the walker is oblivious yeah. to what's going on, and it, it actually it actually frames them up really cool. You know, I mean that that's a that's a fun that's a fun shot. Yeah, I had 
about three or four other couples contact me if they could go to that same spot. Cool. Cool. So is this uh, Poland again? This is my favorite model of all time. One of awesome. my top three. Um, yeah. You know, I, I, I photographed her a couple of times for different magazines. And I said to her, can I photograph you for myself? Like, I just want to do our own thing with no stylist, no um, director. This is just for us. And um, my girlfriend at the time, her father had an old factory where they build steelworks. And I asked him if I could go spend a day there. And she's like, what are we going to do? I was like, you're a worker today. You just happen to be a hot worker. You know, and I rubbed grease on her and all this stuff like that. And yeah, this, this oh, is all my cool. pictures. It's cool. So um, I'm going to just, I'm going to flip back to, I'm going to stop sharing. And it, cause I yeah. want to, I, I, I have some other interesting. So what, like what brought you to Europe? Right. So I got the Trinidad, right. You, you were, you know, you moved from Washington DC to Trinidad to help your aunt with a, a political, her campaign. What brought you to Europe? Cause I could tell you what, what made me travel there, but what brought you to Europe? What, you know, because um, I met, I, so I have an 11 year old daughter. She's 11 years old. She's Sophie. And I met her mother um, while her mother was in working in Trinidad her mother was from Poland. And she was also living in Amsterdam. And in our relationship, we moved. I traveled to Amsterdam. And I always wanted to go to Amsterdam. Um, people are like, it's funny. I remember seeing Pulp Fiction. And he kept talking about Amsterdam. The burgers are called Royale. And I right. was like, just that whole the way he talked about it in the movie. So when the opportunity came, it was really beautiful. And I went there. And I fell in love with that city. I felt like that city was somewhere where I could live. And my photography could grow. Um, the artists, if you're an artist in Amsterdam, they support you so much. I mean, nothing is built, nothing is done without the consideration or the consulate of an artist. If they're going to build a bridge, they're going to, we got to get an artist so we can paint something really nice on this bridge. If they're building a building, we got to get an artist to do something where there's a sculpture. And, you know, that love they give you, the city gave the artist. I just wanted to be part of that. So I, yeah. I decided to stay there. That's cool. I, so when I was... A when I was a young man, I, uh, I decided that I was going to go to Milan. This is when I met Don. So this was a really long time ago, okay. right? This was in, in the early eighties. I met Don in like, he and I have grown up together. So this is when I met Don cause he took over for me at my uncle's studio. So I, um, I decided I was going to go to Milan. Right. And you talk about like doing stuff yourself. Right. I went there with a big box of film, some clothes, my camera bag and that was it right i couldn't speak a lick of the language right it was a i i couldn't even ask like where do you buy a beer or what you know i couldn't even ask any of those questions but the the learning from that and then getting to meet the models and getting to meet and you know you kind of form a team and then you meet other folks who are you know totally international you know i think that that really that part of my education like allowed me to like move to Mexico and run an agency and, you know, do all of those things because, you know, the, you have, you, 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 it's all part of the learning and feeding, you know, like continuously feeding that visual in your brain. Right. Like, like what's next, what am I going to do? And like when you said earlier, well, sometimes you got to do stuff by yourself. Man, you should have seen me standing on one leg, holding a reflector, you know, walking around with clips and trying to, you know, get it so that, that you know, believe me, been there. Yeah. yeah it's awesome. Yeah, I do something for yourself, man. Karen, we're, we're, we're almost at the end. So right. I've got one final question. So okay. where do you think it's going, right? Because you and I belong to a photo group and, you know, I see the varying levels and I really love the fact that you're continuously well check this out and check that out and look at that guy and look at this guy and you're trying to to feed that right so you know because you are, are you know you're kind of you, you travel a great deal more than i do what are you seeing and what do you think is in the future um the future in photography that's a very interesting question is growth is evolution Photography is evolving technology-wise, and it's, it's evolving fast. 
And it's evolving to a point, even the photographers, the generation of photographers that we have now, they may not be as good as we were when we were younger or even from the past. Actually, they're not. But the technology is giving them the aspect to propel themselves as greater than what they really are. And that could be a bad, it could be a good, I'm not sure. It depends on the clients and what they're getting. But I see, I see we as photographers, if we don't evolve with the technology or at least take some parts of it and put it to how we could help our photography, um, it's gonna, it's gonna, we're gonna all suffer. You know what I mean? Like now I use AI now with my photography. I use AI, um, the cameras are smarter. I remember we always use a light, you know, you know, all these, the, if, if you're not using or aware of all these technologies at your disposal, um, and don't be afraid of it because all it to me, I think all it does is allow me to focus more on being creative with what I, what my eyes see. Right. So, I mean, and that's why I see photography is growing. We got to evolve, you know, we yeah. got to, no, I agree. I use, I use AI, I use AI as well. Um, my photography is a little bit more pure than that. I don't really use any AI involved in that because like I am, like I said, I'm, I still have this like original image thing, you know, one shot, the whole, yeah. you know, old school back in the day. Um, but I do use AI quite a bit uh, for other aspects of what I do because I do uh, do do a lot of design as well. And, um, you know, and the AI part of the tool set for designing things is really, um, it's wonderful. It's really great. Like when you come up with an idea and you write one up, Okay, so that's a really good idea, and maybe it's not spelt right, and maybe it's not you know the right tense and stuff like that. The AI tools for correcting that and making it sound like you know, or like put like putting together a little bit of a script or something like that. The tools yeah. are really wonderful. I do have to say that. I, and One thing about it, also, sorry, um, is that's that okay. it it allows me to produce my work faster and less, more money for my pockets. And then I could, my clients are happy, and then I could go out there and go back to my old ways and do the stuff I want for myself because I have more time and more freedom and I just finished three, four jobs, I got paid, and I'm not, you know. So, the, you know, it, it allows you, if you take use it in that aspect, yeah, it's. No, it's a, I, I think as a tool where it's not influencing your look and your aesthetic, yeah, I yeah. think that it's a wonderful thing, right? But the, there's some folks out there that I think that use it and it looks like they're, to me, like their photographs are over-retouched because they're using AI and AI has a tendency to take out all the porosity on skin. And that, that's what and, I and, say. And, and, it looks, and it looks too much like a rendering to me. And, and I, I, that's the part of still photography that I love, right? Is the fact that if the photograph is really compelling, it feels like you can go out and like you could touch the textures and feel the textures, you know? And that's why I say we as photographers need to evolve because when it, there's bad AI and there's good AI, bad AI makes the skin smooth. A good AI is almost like having a retoucher or a production team right next to you. Cool. Many times I take a picture and um, maybe it's a little dot or maybe I have a little dirt on my um, my lens, whatever. The AI will just go in and just, okay, Karen, I see that. Dup, 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 dup. You know what I mean? Cool. But so it's people, minimal. Yeah. yeah. It's minimum, but it, it allows me to not have to go in myself and do that. But right. some people use it very lazy. Oh, blanket the whole thing. And that's why the evolution, you got to evolve with the, with the technology for it, it, better, not for good. You need, for, you need to be better. in control of the, you need to be in control of the technology and not the contra technology that's control the technology. of you. So my work, it's still my work. When people say, sometimes when I show people what, what edit I done, they were like, that's it. I'm like, yeah, you know, but. Well, neat. <laughs> <laughs> so Karen, so we're at the end. Um, thank yeah. you for being on Howard Bright Road Studios. All right, thank you Mag. I'm me. so happy that we were able to have this conversation. Um, good luck to you. And thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and, you know, all I have to do is say it's peace. And it's really great speaking with you finally at length. Have a great day. Take care, buddy. Bye-bye.